Good morning and welcome to Worship Westsiders. This morning at Westside here at the church there is outdoor worship so I thought I would come to you with a mini worship recording from outside too. If your setup allows maybe you want to move outside if it isn't a trillion degrees or raining or something where you are. Seems like we are uh, we're getting a bit of a break today which is good. Here at Westside, we are in a season of abundance. That's been our theme this summer, looking towards the abundance of God. How does God's goodness meet us? How do we look for it? Where do we find it? What does it mean for us? What does this promise mean? And so we continue to explore that uh, with scripture and a short devotion today and prayer and announcements. So grateful that you're here. Glad that God is meeting you just where you are in life. So we begin with scripture. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. It goes like this. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And the disciples said, Some say John the Baptist, or one of uh, the prophets, others say Elijah. He had said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A great text, a great piece of scripture. Uh, what I think of most when I hear this piece of scripture is the question of identity. That's essentially the question that Jesus is asking, right? He's asking the disciples to tell him, who do people say that I am? Who do you think that I am? What do you know about me? And as we know, uh, the world has a lot to say about who we are. That was true in Jesus' time and that's true in our time now. People talk and they keep on talking and so Jesus, you know, Jesus is asking, what are you hearing? What's the rumor mill telling you? And so the disciples say, well, Jesus, the rumor mill is telling us that people are equating you with um, ancestors of the faith, with people like Elijah those who have come before you. John the Baptist, a current prophet, somebody who is bringing God's message to earth, a person of faith. I mean, this is really best case scenario for a rumor mill for Jesus, right? Um, but Jesus says, well, okay, but who do you say that I am? Jesus is asking, who do you uh, know me as? What is my identity to you, my closest followers, my friends? A question of identity. This text um, also makes me think of my favorite identity story, which means I get to tell it to you. Um, and it's a good one. We, my husband and I, uh, had a baby two years ago, a little over two years ago. Everett was born, and uh, he was a NICU baby, so he was in the hospital, and we were there for a couple of weeks and got to know our doctors and our nurses, incredible care. Um, he only ever got better. It was a good thing that we could be there. And we had been told that possibly we would be going home. This was, I think, a Thursday. Possibly we would be going home. Um, the hospital, you know, was almost two hours away from where we lived. So Sam and I, my husband and I, got in the car and drove home to get our house ready to bring a baby into it, which we had done a few weeks prior, but you know, we needed to figure out how to do all over again since we had not actually gone home yet. And so we went home and we got our stuff and we got everything ready. And as we were driving back to the hospital, we got a call and my spouse was driving and, uh, and he answered, the phone rings through his car, you know how that goes, and he answered, and it was the voice of our doctor, and, and she said, hi, is this Everett's dad? And we both were surprised and looked at each other and thought, oh my gosh, that's our new identity. We are parents, Everett's mom and Everett's 
dad. It was the first time that we had heard it out loud. Obviously, we had known this is who we were, but, uh, but the identity, the piece of identity, what that meant for our lives, to hear that from somebody else in that moment, it was shocking. The things that define us. What is your identity? What does the world say you are? And is that the right thing? And that's really the question that Jesus is asking here is what the world, is what the world says the right thing? Is what the world says what it really is? And so when Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answers, well, you are the son of God. You are the Messiah, a savior. Jesus says, yes, and I am that because God tells me I am that, not because the world says it, not because I think it, not because I made a choice that that's what I was doing, but because God has declared this about me, identity. And in and within and under and around all of the identities that we have in life, the things that we choose for ourselves, the things that we are because of the people we love like parents, siblings, spouses, children. These are parts of our identity, right? Our histories, just like Jesus's history is a way that he was identified. Our histories are a part of our identity. And then, and then there is what the world says about us, which is sometimes right and most of the time not. The world has a lot to say, but what Christ says, what God says, is that our identity does not rest on any of that. All of those, most of those, might be important pieces, but our identity rests in what God has to say about us. And at our creation and in our baptisms, what God says about us is, I choose you. I love you. I claim you. I call you by name. You are mine. That is the identity that we receive in Christ Jesus, loved and forgiven and saved. We don't have to worry about the other things, wondering who we are. We know who we are. God has declared it. Everything else on top of that, all those other pieces of our identity, are part of God's call for us in life to share our gifts with the world, to be friends, to be teachers or doctors or nurses or something else, to be parents, if that's what we choose to do, to be who we are, to be good neighbors to others, because we don't have to worry whether or not we are good enough for the world. God has already declared us to be beloved. That's the identity. So Jesus says, yes, you have declared this correctly for me, Peter. I am Messiah. I am Savior, not because the world has said I am, but because God has said I am. And it is on this promise, Christ says, it is on this promise, this declaration of faith, that I will build my church. Us knowing the promise, us sharing this promise, promise, telling others that Christ is the Savior, the Messiah, that they are beloved, that their identity rests in God. This is the mission of the church, to share this love. And so Christ says, this is a rock. This is a foundation of what we do here at Westside and in so many other places in the world. We share this love because we know it is foundational, because we know our identities rest on it. Again, not what the world says about you, but what God says about you. That you are loved and forgiven and saved. That is your identity. And so Jesus reminds us, and so he calls it out to the disciples and to us too. This eternal promise, one that we can trust, one that we are called to share, uh, one that we know to be true about ourselves and all of the people we love and the people who are hard to love. God declares this about all of us. Oh, and it is good news. So let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by your abundance we are called to share your love with the world, that we trust we are given this identity, that you have made a decision about us long before we could earn your love or goodness. God, you give us our identities, and so uh, we can be foundational. That can be our foundation. We can share the gospel with others. Help us to do so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thank you for being part of mini worship today. A few things for you to know before we go. Uh, first of all, we have concluded our Growing Pains campaign for a little bit of resourcefulness and, and expansion here at church using what we have in order to continue to be welcoming and to utilize our resources. So we have raised over $23,000 for that. Thank you. Thank you for the ways that you were a part of that. Know if you wish to continue financially supporting Westside, you are also welcome to do so. We would be delighted for to have your support so head to wslc.info to learn about the ways that you can do that. We are also gearing up for fall kickoff here, which means kicking off the educational year with faith formation. Faith formation are edu is education classes for kids all the way up to youth and young adults uh, for ways that we can learn and grow in the faith. So this happens on Sunday mornings and on Wednesday evenings. Uh, register your kids for faith formation again at wslc.info. Let me know, send me an email, uh, or reach out in another way if you would like to be a part of helping that. It's good to teach the kids the faith. It's another thing that we are called to as people of the body of Christ. So all of these are good things. I hope that you have a wonderful week filled with peace and love, knowing and trusting that your identity comes from God. And so God calls you into whatever is next. Good to see you today. Grace and peace be with you.